recent Caribbean movie about life, love, vice, and cricket. Up next, a chat with the filmmaker, Alison Saunders Franklin. When America wants to know what's happening in the Caribbean diaspora, there is one clear choice. Hello, welcome to Carib Nation. Both people inside and outside are very excited about today's program. Looking at you, I can tell that you've traveled the journey. <laughs> One television organization brings America close to the people, stories, and events that affects Caribbean life. Get close, get answers, get Carib Nation. Hello, I'm Doris Dean. Welcome to Carib Nation. Today our chat is with Alison Saunders Franklin, the filmmaker of a new Caribbean film, Hit for Six. Alison, welcome to Carib Nation. Thanks very much for talking with us. Let's start off by talking first about where did the idea come from? I was working with West Indies Cricket for about six years as a public relations consultant. And that involved um, interacting with the West Indies team at times, uh, the administrators, media, a wide range of stakeholders in cricket. And I had a lot of challenging experiences in that time West Indies went through a lot of trials and I was right there in the midst of a lot of it, trying to understand a lot of what was going on and work with it. As a result of coming out of that experience, I stopped doing that about five years ago. I felt, you know, I have to do something with this experience that I've mm. had. I mean, it's quite an unusual experience, especially as a woman. Right. There were very true. few women. Um, I was the only one actually in, um, the more um, at the you know executive level in in West Indies cricket, and I, I was a consultant, mm -hmm. but I was interacting at the level of the board and so on, and I had a first-hand view of the inner world, mm -hmm. and it's a world that not many people get to experience. Both understanding the psychology of the cricketer, you know how mm -hmm. the challenges they face, and of the old guard, who made up a lot of the administrators and people who were involved, people from the glory days, who had a different perspective on the game than the younger true, players. True. And I found it was a, a worrying thing that they didn't understand each other. Mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that drove me to, to write that story, which is really a metaphor for the gap that exists between mm -hmm. the old West Indies cricket and the current reality. Right. And I feel it's a gap that needs to be bridged. And it was very well portrayed, I must say, in the film. It was very clear what you were trying to do to show the, the two uh, ends of the scale, mm -hmm. so to speak, and how they think and how they see uh, mm -hmm. uh, cricket uh, in their own lives. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, was, it was the life mm -hmm. of the old guard, mm -hmm. whereas it's Maybe not necessarily so with the, with the, the younger set. Um, let's talk a little bit about once you got the idea to write the story. Now, first of all, um, how did you decide that you would write the story rather than tell somebody and have someone else write it? Well, <coughs> I've always been involved in writing. Mm -hmm. I've studied television production and that included writing in the early 80s mm -hmm. and before that I was involved writing for radio. My first job was doing a weekly radio program, um, took me all around the Caribbean and I used to write that and produce it myself and do the voiceovers, everything, mm -hmm. interviews, everything. So I've been a writer for many, many years but I had not done much dramatic writing. Mm -hmm. I had done some educational um, dramatic pieces for uh, UN and PAHO, that kind yeah. of thing. We had done things on HIV and AIDS mm. and other issues, social issues, um, gender rights and so on, women's rights. Mm -hmm. And those were done in a dramatic narrative drama format. Mm. But in terms of seriously <coughs> writing a screenplay, my first major exposure to that was in 2004 when I went to film school in London. Mm -hmm. And we had to do a project. And I did a 30-minute short film that was actually the backstory to 
our main character's life and the first time he met his father nice. and um, when he was 17 at Harrow in England. And I came up with that backstory for his life. Oh, I see. And I wrote the script then and I enjoyed writing it. I worked with a French tutor who knew nothing about cricket. Hmm. And it was an interesting experience, you know, collaborating with somebody who, who didn't know the game at all. And helping them to understand what you were trying yes, to say. Yes, and it was very useful for me to, to be working with somebody like that. Yeah, he, because you really have to make it work so yes. they can understand it. Yeah, yeah and he was wonderful. <coughs> and he, he actually, he, he on the other hand, Try to learn as much about it in the short time as he could mm -hmm. that I was writing that script. And um, that encouraged me to go on to write the feature. I already had the story for the feature, the storyline. Mm -hmm. And he, the same tutor, helped me um, work through some of that. And then um, when I came back to the Caribbean, I screened my short. And people and friends and other people encouraged me to go on, you know, and, you know, and write my feature. Oh, yeah. And uh, it took me two years, but I got it done. <laughs> and I worked with script consultants, um, one out of New York, a Barbadian out of New York, who had been in, in that role with Miramax and some other companies. You know, I, I'm not a very technical person <laughs> when it comes right. to cricket, so I wanted to make sure that we had all of the terms correct and that the the scoring lines made it's sense authentic, and yeah. that things happened the way that they should happen. Mm -hmm. the, the different shots that I was saying the right thing. I mean, I, you know, I had a sense of what it should be, but I wanted to be sure. And he was very good. He enjoyed that process as well. I'm sure. Yeah. Writing, you know, we'd come up with, with those cricket scenes. And then other people weighed in in terms of checking that for me, reading it. Um, the late Stephen Alley, um, who just died, mm -hmm. um, he was wonderful. He, he read my script in full twice and then sections, the final draft, he mm -hmm. really went over the cricket parts for me, looked at scores and, you know, all of those things. Really made things. the little things, the yes, little details because that people, make it authentic. Cricket people notice. We'll pick it up. Yeah. I experienced that with my short and where cricket people would notice that the bills were off. <laughs> Stephen pointed that out to me, I remember, uh, you know, yeah. the bills were off <laughs> when they were bowling and things like that. Mm -hmm. That um, And that that we wanted to make sure that those things were in place. Yeah, that's good. Now, funding is always an issue when you start something like this on your own. Mm -hmm. uh, you seem to have been very fortunate. Uh, first of all, your focus was finding Barbadian. You wanted a total Barbadian team, Barbadian cast, mm -hmm. which I think is um, really to be applauded that you didn't accept the first thing that came your way or the first person that came your way that might have either known of cricket or was a good actor but you looked for real Caribbean actors who could do the job mm -hmm. uh, and, and fill the bill. Tell us a little bit about that journey, funding and finding the, your, the people. That, the, the funding was the most challenging aspect of the whole exercise, I would say. As always. Uh, yeah, it was very, very hard. But what I think made a difference in this, this project, it's the first time I think in Barbados that the business and the creative came together and um, really formed a strong partnership that endures to this day. Uh, Basil Springer, Dr. Mm -hmm. Basil Springer, who is a... Another you know, a renowned um, business consultant yeah, yeah. Uh, met me in a car park one day and, you know, asked me what I was doing. I said, well, I want to make a movie. And he said, really? You know, and um, we started to talk and he said, you know, this is the kind of thing that my organization mm. supports. And he's very support. supportive of, of young talent, mm -hmm. anything that's Barbadian, West Indian. He's, mm -hmm. he's a great person. Great in terms person. Of, yeah. And uh, he came on board from that moment, till, and he's mm. still, we are still partners. Mm -hmm. And he um, helped me to raise the 700,000 US mm -hmm. dollars that we wow. needed. And at the time, it, I myself, I'm, I'll be honest, I didn't believe we could do it, mm. that we could raise that amount. Mm -hmm. 
and I had secretly I had a different figures, you know, <laughs> <laughs> talk to me. More realistic than I thought about, you know, <laughs> he's saying that, but I, you know. Um, but we did. And um, he was a tremendous inspiration yeah. in terms of helping me to believe a, that I could do this. Yeah, that's the kind of person he is. And he's he's yeah. really very supportive and, and, and forward-looking. Yeah. yeah, and it continues to be a challenge. You know, <coughs> we have to believe at every stage that we can get to the next stage and get to the next stage. And one of the metaphors um, if I, that you know I heard once that applied directly to this experience is that you have your lights on and you're driving on a dark road and you only see 200 feet in front of you but that's all you need mm. to get to the next the one next then day. you see the you next see the 200 next. feet Interesting. and um i when i heard that i heard that after i made the film and i said you know that's exactly that's what how we it did. happens yeah we saw just 200 feet and we still do <laughs> we only see 200 <laughs> feet ahead and and then we just get there and get to the next stage keep moving yeah. and basil helped me to believe that we could do that that while we couldn't see to the end, that mm -hmm. we will get yeah, there. Yeah. Um, so that was a tremendous experience. Um, and then through him, I met lots of other wonderful people, like my lawyer who's in the UK, still with us every day, mm -hmm. um, you, know, you know, just searching for opportunities, mm -hmm. different things, putting me on to people. Um, Brian Norris is his name. Tremendous supporter of this project. Um, my chairman, Jerry Blenman, who's a financial consultant, still with me. He's my chairman now. Um, there were other people, you know, mm -hmm. that I met through, mainly through Basel, really. Yeah. And these are the people who came together and um, helped me <laughs> raise this money. And, Fantastic. Um, we had support from the corporate sector in terms of sponsorship. People like Coxpur, Kevin mm -hmm. Wireless, Sajikor. Um, the big names know, in the Caribbean. Yes, the big names yeah. in the Caribbean. And we're very, very pleased to have their support. I had tremendous support and continue to have from my bank, First Caribbean mm. International Bank, who, was, you know, some believed in the project and, yeah. and gave me that very important um, support first, in financing, yeah. um, you know, a lot of the bridging money and so on that we needed while we were raising the real money, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. and, th and they continue to be partners in, in this venture in a sense, Excellent. you know, keeping us afloat. And um, the other thing, then we got some private investors, mm -hmm. and that was very important um, to, to get that kind of support. And uh, then the government also mm -hmm. came on board um, with um, <coughs> full grant <coughs> and equity. Mm -hmm. So we have both grant and equity from public sector institutions. And um, Trinidad, my land of my birth, I was born in Trinidad, even though I, I hold dual citizenship. Mm -hmm. I'm a Barbadian. I've spent much more time in Barbados, Barbados. than I've spent <laughs> in Trinidad. But in spite of that, I, I still was able to have the support of the Trinidad Film Company. And uh, at, that was at the script writing stage. I had a grant from them. Mm -hmm. And they've been supportive, in other words, ways since. So it's been, um, it was... So, you know, reciting all of this, it sounds all very easy and wonderful, but it was a tremendous struggle and well, continues course, to be. calling and going after people and oh, writing yes. letters and years of work, and, years yeah. of work. And <coughs> I'm, you know, I, I would hope other people don't have to go through, it doesn't have to be as grueling as it was for us, um, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, to do this, um, but. There's no guarantee that it won't be. It probably will be again. I think it will probably always be. <laughs> the, once people yeah, have to spend yeah. money, they will think twice before they commit Yes, and it's a risky it's, business. It's a risky tough, business. Um, it's yeah. a risky business. It's a tough business. I wouldn't fool anyone. Mm -hmm. um, so, But I think we have to put the structures in place to make it better for people. One of the ways that film has been financed in other countries is through tax incentives mm. and it's a way to make it less painful for business people to, to take this the, tremendous yes, risk make the contribution, um, yeah. you know and you're making a contribution to an art form to a commercial enterprise mm -hmm. that has a future mm -hmm. but we are in a fledgling stage so we need to 
help those people who are willing to invest mm -hmm. by giving them those tax incentives yeah. so that at least it cushions their effect their bill, of their yeah. investment. Yeah. And I am hopeful that that's one of the things that will be in place sooner than later in Barbados mm -hmm. so that more, more companies can and individuals can um, invest without it being such a yeah, a, 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 real a risk and strain yeah, for, for them, them. you know. Yeah. But um, but we are very appreciative of all the support we have had. Um, and we also had support in kind. Our camera equipment mm -hmm. was new from Merville Lynch Productions, mm. and Merville invested his. He was the first person. He invested his camera in our project, wow. and. Um, our lighting equipment was from Creative Junction. We were the first local project to use their whole bus, their mm. whole big bus. Um, and they're based in Barbados. They're in Barbados, mm. but they normally work with big, you know, foreign companies who are doing major films and mm -hmm. ads and features and things like that mm -hmm. in the island, but they're from outside. Right. So we were lucky to be able to... Um, have them as an investor and well partially mm -hmm. part of the cost was done as an investment so all of those things put together and all the other contributions and kind of hotel mango bay hotel um, yeah Peter i noticed Odo. you used lots of hotels in the movie which Peter i thought Odo. was great yeah because the yeah. scenery was fabulous yeah. um the cast also came from all over the caribbean mm. which i think is also admirable mm -hmm. that you were able to track down these people <laughs> and uh, I, I, I think it's the longest credit list I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I think we must hold that record. <laughs> I think you have a record, the longest yeah, credit list. Yeah, it's all the thank yous, you yes. know, um, people who make films, you know, maybe in North America, so, um, it, well, I guess the same things do happen, but I mean, we had just so many people yeah in so many little ways mm -hmm. some big some small you know um it might be somebody who let us have a car mm. at a you know a bit happened you know mm -hmm. you get a week free or you know right, uh, right. pay half right. price or yeah a, a designer who gave us clothes or yeah. you know just just a whole Lots range of, of and we wanted you know this is our first effort and we wanted to include everyone. <laughs> and so well, I think sure that did. we did. I think, you know, we saw it long and said, you know, anybody, anybody who helped us, mm -hmm. we wanted to say, thank you. You are part of this. Um, it's your film, too. We invited just about everybody who helped us to our premiere, which is not what happens <laughs> normally. And we probably right. won't do that again. again yeah. But, <laughs> but, but you know, it was the first time. Yeah. And I, we wanted to include yeah. as many as possible so yes yeah <laughs> eternal list <laughs> yeah, that, that was this was quite long <laughs> yeah now in choosing your actors um again i think the actors were well chosen for the parts um what kind of response did you get from them initially uh, I'm, i think you as i remember you said you went all over the place looking yeah to no find West tremendous Virginia. support um <laughs> I was overwhelmed by that because I called, cold called people like Rudy Walker, who is a big star in England. He's in the most popular soap opera. He's been in Love Thy Neighbor. He's been in films. I never met the man. He never heard of me at all. <laughs> and why would he, you know? And I called him. I remember sitting on my bed at home, you know, Sunday or something, and I called him up. How do you find these people? Well, he, my producer, Colleen Hugh, who, um, she lived in England. I see. And so. she said, you know, I think he would be great for this role. And I said, yeah, I remember him. And she said, I think he plays cricket, you know. Mm -hmm. And we searched for two months for his number. Wow. Um, went to different people, you know, just to mm -hmm. find how to get on to him. And eventually the Trinidad and Tobago Film Company were the ones who uh, gave us his number. Uh -huh. And I called him up and he said on the phone, after we spoke for about 20 minutes, he said, I'll do it. Wow. I'll change Just my like vacation that. 
Oh, I'll change my vacation. I have two weeks vacation going to Ghana. And instead of going to Ghana, I'm going to, I'll come to Barbados. And uh, mm. I was like, wow. And then, but then his agent stepped in uh-huh. and kind of the said, well, hey, always, you know, yeah. <laughs> <The> <laughs> agents always send the script, do this, do that, you know. So then we had to go through the Protocol, more traditional yeah. process. But at least I knew, and she kept the agent said, well, he really wants to do it, mm. you know. So mm-hmm. that made that the negotiation. Was, yeah. A lot Mm -hmm. easier. And eventually, he also became associate producer of the project. Mm -hmm. So we were very pleased to have him. So he's more than just an actor in the film. He became part of our team, and and we were very pleased and honored to have him. Alison Seely Smith was the same thing. Um, She didn't remember me from school or anything like Mm. that. But I called her up, you know, and I said, I'm doing this film. And she said, yeah. And she was great great for that. Yeah, wonderful. And um, she said she'd like to do it. Um, I knew Andrew Pilgrim for a long time mm. and I thought he was abroad and then one day I was in the registry and I saw him walking and wow. um, you know we talked about it and um, we, we did have auditions with other people but he was chosen and then a lot of the other roles um, I had a casting director and oh, Andrea Allen who has been involved in that role for many years and uh, she's in Barbados now for many years she's and lived in Dublin. And, and she helped me cast most of the other parts. Um, Varia auditioned. J- Janelle was an interesting one in that we had someone else for the role who it didn't work out. And um, my DP suggested, and she was in New York, so I had to get my production designer to do the audition on tape. And he sat me the tape and I went, wow! Yeah. That's that's the part. That's Astrid. That's, yeah. And then I called my producer, and she went, "Ooh, that's." <laughs> and everybody, one by one, my whole team, everybody kept coming in the, the room where we were looking at the tape, and everybody had the same reaction. Mm. And we felt, and she didn't have a lot of experience, but we thought but she just she did a great job, yeah, and she actually she won an award um, for her role really? at the yeah. Bridgetown Film Festival. Yeah. Out of all the actresses in all the films, she won. Excellent. So we were very excited. Well, that about that. that drowning scene was phenomenal. Yes, I yes. thought she did a great job. Yes, because we were worried about that because yeah. um, it could easily have become melodramatic. Yeah, and, and but we thought but that she was well done. All of that, very, very well, well done. Well. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I, the cinematography was also great, and I understand you had a Jamaican team. Yes, yeah. So yes. you really incorporated the entire Caribbean. Yes, we which, wanted to get the best Caribbean talent anywhere in the world. Mm-hmm. That was our sort of mantra, mm-hmm. um, and we we were we went wherever we f- could find. Right. Caribbean and, and that's people. the way to do it. I that's, think. you know, I went to somebody in L.A. Yeah. We went, you know, talked to people in New York. I met some people in New York. I went to London. We went wherever to Canada, wherever mm-hmm. we could find Caribbean people mm-hmm. um, who were the best at what they do. Right. Um, we wanted, we wanted them. Mm-hmm. And um, for the, for the, Barbados based casting we we publicized it a lot and we had tremendous response Mm -hmm. and I remember we spent a whole day from like 8 in the morning till 5 in the afternoon back to back doing all of the auditions big set and then we came back we did another another half two half days Mm -hmm. of audition so we we did we did it fully yeah Yeah. try to you know you always look back and say, well, maybe this, maybe that. But right. um, we certainly did our best to, to get the best talent we could find. What kind of response did you get from the young people, uh, young children, or what, not teenagers, the young people looking to be cricketers, and the young people in, in Barbados in general? Did they understand that, that whole idea of the story that the old guard feels that the young group of cricketers are really not putting everything into it that they, they don't see it as a, a as something they own and have to be committed to and not look for the accolades only, but be prepared mm. to put in the hard work. Mm. Do you think they well, get it? Um, I, yeah, they, um, they get it. We've done research. We did research in Trinidad um, with the help of some funds we got from the marketing, uh, one of the organizations, IDC, because we wanted to understand our audience. Mm-hmm. Um, better and uh, um, I would say the audience the, the audience the film attracts 
um, not so much the teen audience, but more the over 28, because they tend to divide into under 28 and over 28. So like, um, which is one, this is a bit of a challenge in that it has more appeal to, to that audience. Mm -hmm. um, but, or everybody understood, got the messages and those kinds of things mm -hmm. uh, at all ages. Right, right. Um, but there's more of that um, a pull Mm -hmm. For the for the persons who are a bit older, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. that's what that's what we found. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna have a better s chance to reach the younger people by probably going through the school system right. in the Barbados yeah, initially, sure. and then in the other islands. That's one of the things I personally would like to do, mm -hmm. because while it may not attract them to the theaters, I think if we screen it in schools mm -hmm. where they're watching as a group, right? Um, you know, and the, I'm the, sure the dynamic among themselves, will, among yes, each other, yes, will, yeah. We believe that will certainly work. I mean, but but yes, I've had you know good feedback from young. I think a lot of the young women like the, you know, this, this, the love story the and love that story, kind yes, of thing. Yes, yes. yes. The teen, you know. Yeah, they of like course, that, yeah, we have the, the girls. basketball. Yeah, the guys here. want more action and <laughs> 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 that sort of thing, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, but, um, but, yeah, they get the messages. Yeah, because they're they the cricket the stars. We have teachers want want us to come into the school system because they feel that the messages are so important mm -hmm. for um, yeah price men. fixing the whole i mean not price yeah, fixing, but game fixing, fixing match yes, fixing yes, yes, yes. is uh, another thing that uh, seems to be surfacing more and more in all games yes and so that's something to be addressed well it's strange as we, we premiered it became a hot topic i mean um as in fact i was editing in the final stages of post-production where we were transferring to 35 mm -hmm for our premiere and that's when um, the gentleman was allegedly um, Mr. Wilma murdered in Jamaica. Oh, yeah. And oh, that's right. And they were attributing yes. it to some involvement with that. But that's I mean, right. Whether Much that fixing, is yeah. the case, you know, that's right. all a matter of yeah. conjecture. But um, so it did bring some focus to something that we were highlighting in yeah. the film. Yeah, interesting. Because yeah. um, in, I remember people at the studio were saying, oh, that's what your film is about, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Because it was in New yes, York Times, you know, fixing, a big yeah. story. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, thanks again for talking with us. I think it's a, a great film. Uh, this is not Barbados' first, but it's your first, and I think it's a great start. Um, for those of us who've seen it, I think we've been very pleased with it, and you ought to be very proud and very pleased. And I wish you all the best in the future, and I hope it does very well wherever it goes. Yeah, well, we hope to screen here in the U.S., and particularly targeting the Caribbean communities in different cities like New York, Boston, mm -hmm. here in D.C., Miami, and so on. Yeah. So we're really looking forward to Caribbean people coming out, and others. Yeah, because and you might get some Australians really. and Indians yeah, and yeah. all the cricketers from around the world. And it's not just cricket, you know. This is a universal story about people, mm -hmm. and it's really about relationships, father, son. Yes, yes. It's about lovers, it's about yeah. mother and son. Yeah. All